Wow. Okay. There's nothing fancy flashy about tonight. There's nothing flashy about these services. We're here in an advanced kind of a Bible study environment that we call tithing our time. It's not for people who don't have something to do. All of us have something to do. It's not for people who are down on their luck. We're all up in our faith. But it has everything to do with when God makes a call and says, you know, as, as things start to go left or right or forward or grow and the seasons change, I need there to be a commitment from some of us, should be all of us, that will say, Lord, you know, whatever it is that you have been doing in my life, continue to do it. And I just want to say this. Sometimes when I was growing up, we used to have, um, my mother had a record player. Um, and, and when one song would go off, uh, if you liked that song, you would take that needle and, and move it back and reset it and play that song again. How many of you in here used to dance when you were younger? Younger. Amen. I mean, how many of you could dance and you danced hard? Okay. And when that song went off, you were tired a little bit. I don't want to get into, I just want to get in when you were younger. I don't want to get into when you got a little older. older. And you would reset that song. Your mother would move that record back. And, and, and as tired as you were, because of what that music did, you would dance again, right? I, I just want you tonight to thank God for the ability to reset. And I just think it's a good thing, y'all, for us to, to be able to reset, to reset. Now, now this is not something that, um, as long as I've been preaching and pastoring, um, I've, given, I've given the enemy a reason to come after me. Don't, don't just think that you just get to do that because you're a Christian. There are things you're going to say that are going to change and mold lives. And then there'll be times when everyone in this room will just feel at an absolute low. And it'll be those times when God will say, I got you, I, I need you, and I want you to reset. Just, 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 just go back and play over in your mind and read that scripture over in your mind and, and, and say those things to me out loud again that you said a long time ago. And God will continue to add to you. And, and, and that's all this is, y'all. And I just want to stay as simple and plain tonight as I possibly can. But before we do this tonight, I want to call every teenager. I ask a few teenagers to come down front, okay? Teenagers have a lot to do. And tonight is one of those nights when it's Friday and there are all kinds of, of things going on. We have kids even practicing in other areas of this building. But those of you that are in here, I want you to come here for a minute. Just, just, just stand up and come down here for a minute. Just come down here for a minute. Just, just stand, they're gonna stand right here. Now, I want to thank Sister Calloway. I just met her. She's from Fort Worth, and she says, I've bought all of your CDs. So you're the lady that got them. <laughs> no. So she purchases CDs, she listens to us, and this was her first time ever, ever being at IBLC. And a friend of yours invited you tonight. <laughs> right. What's her name? Is Kim Reeves here? Kim Reeves? Wow. Well, Kim, here's Callaway. So y'all may want to sit by each other if you want to. It's cool to come on down. Or you may not want to sit by her. You work with all day. You may not want to see her. That's your friend or something. But, but thank you for inviting her, Kim. There's, a, there's, a, there's something about the blessing of being obedient. I don't know what you just did that increased another whole different kind of power in your life, but you were obedient. And so there, there she is. Now, y'all, let me, let me talk for a minute. We're going to go into our proclamation and all in a minute. But I want to talk to you. I, I, I need to say some things to you that God has laid on my heart. And I want to teach you, and that's what we've been teaching this week, teach you how to, how to hear from God and God will say some things. And you're going to take a couple of more notes tonight um, because there are so many other things that are pouring into your ears, and I really admire the, the thought of, of you guys coming. I know what happens. I know sometimes your mom, dad say, you go and go to church, and you better go to church, and I understand that. So you've been obedient by coming, um, 
But tonight I want you to, I want you to, I want you to know that there's somebody else that God wants to reach through you. Okay? It's, it's not just y'all. And let me say this. It's not just now. See, you don't eat fruit from a tree the day you plant it. You have to plant it, water it, walk away. And sometimes 10 or 15 years later, the fruit's on that tree. And I don't know if you guys even, have you ever seen a fruit tree in person before? A fruit tree, an apple tree, or, or even maybe an orange tree, a lemon tree. You ever seen any of that in, in person? Not really? Okay. So, so in Texas, sometimes we don't, we don't really get that. Have any of you ever seen watermelon? Not on a truck, but on the ground. <laughs> you know, they don't grow at the mall. They grow in the ground for real, trust me. Any of you ever seen fruit on the ground? How many of you have not? Have not? Okay. So see, even if you saw it, you wouldn't know what that was unless someone told you. And I just got to take a little bit of extra time with you tonight. Because out of every group like this, there's someone that kind of emerges. There's someone that's going to be called weird, crazy. Uh, you believe that God stuff, church girl, church boy, soft um, and there are names that will come with that okay and there are accusations do you know what that word means that's when people accuse you of something and at that point it discourages you and it makes you feel like I'm trying to do all these good things and right things and I am doing right things and wrong things are happening Jesus said in this St. Mark Third chapter, he was preaching. The word said Jesus was preaching. And a man walked in. They didn't care if the man was crippled. They wanted to see what Jesus was going to do. Not that they might get in line and be blessed themselves. They said they wanted to see if they could accuse him. Because he wanted to do good to someone who didn't look like they deserved it. This man had a problem. And when you have problems, and your problems could be sometimes physical or mental, most people feel better when they just give you something and move away. And I don't know who, who in this room needs really, a, 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 I don't want to say a special prayer, but you, you need desperately for God to move in your life. And you know, we have a ton of young people in this church. We call out the prayer Sunday, there'll be young people from side to side, and we know that. And they're busy, and they're some of the most important people in our cities. And they don't have cars, and they don't have ways to even get to church sometimes when they, when they want to come. But somehow God has provided you a way to be here tonight. So I want to be obedient to God. And I just want you in your mind, before we even start, and in your heart, there are some things you've prayed for. And I don't want you to be afraid of, of how God's going to answer. And I don't want you to be angry um, at God and stop listening for him. But again, tonight, we're going to walk through just, just a little at a time. And I want you guys to be bold enough so that if we're at a point in the message and you don't get it, say, hey, pastor, can you just stop and, and kind of back up a little bit and, and make, make sure that I get that part right there, okay? I want you to just take your hands, just one hand, your right hand if you want. Just elevate it. And I want you to lift up somebody else. And I'm going to walk you through this prayer because God is going to use you through your obedience. God is going to use you to bless someone else. And once, once that's ignited, once that's ever happened to you, something happens in your thinking and your belief about God that makes you say, God, let me, let me try that again. But it's, it's got to be a first time. If there hasn't always been, there's going to be a first time. And I want you to remember this night. I want you to remember this night. So with your hand stretched out, I just want to walk you through this. I want you to say, Lord, start with me. I'm willing. And tonight... I'm available, but you are able. I need you, God, to work through me. You understand the pressures. You understand the temptations. You understand the pattern of being a teenager. 
Lord, when you were 30, they discovered you again. I don't know when, and I don't know how, but I need you tonight, Lord, to show the devil that I've been discovered. I have gifts, I have talents, and I have the ability to hear from you. Speak to me tonight through your word. I'm going to be a teenager. And I'm going to be shy, but I'm going to be bold. I'm going to be quiet, but I'm going to be loud. I'm going to be courageous, and sometimes I'll shy away. But I want to be used by you. Thank you tonight for giving me a heart to be obedient. I want to have a conversation with you, God. I want to get to know you like the older people know you and to trust you like a child in Jesus name. Amen. Now God laid on my heart to just walk you through that and and no one's called me about some issue you're going through and all of that kind of stuff but let's get ready for our lesson tonight okay. And I want you to always just, 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 just stay open now. Stay open. And sometimes things happen and you'll say to people a few years ago, man, one night at church, I was 15, and my preacher told me to come up and reach out my hand. And that was the night I realized, wow, I was able to hear from God. Or one night I was 14, one night I was 13, one night I was 18, however your age is. Every once in a while, something happens in moments when there are no parades, when, when there are no announcements, when there are no DJs, when, when there's, there are no fancy lights. It's just a simple night like tonight and a simple sign of obedience. And then something is going to happen. And let me say before I start teaching this word tonight, when you are hurting and need healing, God's word will heal you of things that you didn't know to ask for. So, so sometimes y'all, that's just why you, you have to, I'm gonna say this, have to, that's why your parents and that's why we're in church because sometimes you don't even know where the next attack is gonna come from. But the word is like medicine. The manual has already been printed. The book has already been written and if you want to operate the way the manufacturer or the owner or the builder expected you to operate you're going to have to know it was built before you were okay this is the blueprint in other words this is the pattern now this is not just a a child's message tonight by no means by no means but there's going to be something that's going to separate you if those of you that'll be singing Sunday that'll separate you from 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 teenagers. It's just going to separate you. You're still going to be a teenager. You're still going to do your thing. You're still going to get in some trouble and teenage stuff and temptations and all that's going to come. I'm not saying that it won't. But your thinking is going to be different. And I've learned to obey God and to talk to those whose thinking will be different. There will be a, a point in your life where it'll separate you from your friends. And you kind of feel a little weird. But just remember this. Now, we know this is the manual to what? A car. What kind of car? Lexus. So we've already learned this week that if we want to know how to operate some of those other things, to get to the details, it's already been printed, right? We don't have to make a new one of these, do we? Okay. This is the book to a what? Huh? How you know that? Because y'all can read. So will we, look, whoa, this one is thicker than this one. You know why? Because Mercedes are no good. They got a lot of problems. (laughs) No, just (laughs) What really went on was that they're just two totally different 
cars. If you have a Mercedes, do you read this Lexus? To, will this one kind of help you? No. But they're both cars. If, if you have a Lexus, do you need this? Never. Are they both cars? Now, there, there are some similarities. But when you go to the Lexus shop, if you go with the Lexus, they'll use this. But you know what you can do? You can take a Lexus to the Mercedes shop. And you know what they'll do at Mercedes? Mess up your car. <laughs> no, they'll pull out a Lexus manual, even though it's at the Lexus shop. I mean, uh, uh, even if it's at the Mercedes shop, they'll pull this one out and say, let's see what this is. All I'm saying to you guys before we sit down, that's the Bible. Um, Sometimes you just got to know. Kids are going to say, you believe. You ever heard people say, I don't believe in the Bible? Raise your hand if you've ever heard that. Okay. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you ever thought that, because I don't want anybody to ever say, what? What? Because sometimes we do. But, but I want you to help me right now in, in the Holy Spirit. Do you understand why the Bible was written so far this week? Do you understand it now? Do you understand why this was written? Why was this written? Hmm? To help you solve those problems with your car. You can read this before you get a car. I'm going to tell you something. When you first get your first car, that's all you do all night and all day is read this. About your third or fourth one, you never open it. Because you figure that you can operate it on your own. Do we understand why these manuals were written? Do you understand why that manual was written? Do you know everything in that manual? And I don't know everything in this. Y'all get it? And that's why, y'all, we keep coming back. And I don't know, I don't know why God's taking so much time with you. But I, I, I knew that growing up, some people told me stuff, but they never took time with me. They just figured that everybody was getting it. And, and sometimes you listen to all of the amens and hallelujahs and you think, wow, this is a hot place. But I couldn't get it to work for me afterwards. Sometimes when I'm trying to learn computers, and y'all have heard me talk about it, I could probably be great at computers, but sometimes the people that are trying to teach me, they don't have the patience because sometimes I'm intimidated by that computer. No, I'm intimidated by that teacher. Because I don't sometimes want people to know that I'm really dumb in some of those areas. Because they'll say, you know, and I'll go, yeah. <laughs> because when people say, you know, you're supposed to say, I know. And I don't want you all to be blocked from God pouring into you. Because everybody else thinks because you go to church all the time that you know. If I need a word from God, do you know God will speak to you to tell me, Pastor, Look on page 37, and that will be like Ezekiel 4th chapter or something like that. Look at, what I, look at what God showed me today. I want to share it with you. He's not going to go write a new Bible, but he'll show some new answers to some people that already have one. Now, can we run into this thing tonight, y'all? Can I count on you to try to stay as alert and awake as possible? And I don't mean that you're going to go to sleep, but, but you're tired. You had school today. Okay, and I respect that. But God has spoken to me to tell me to be as clear as possible because I don't want you to never trust God because no one ever took the time to trust you with it. Okay? All right. So I'm going to be standing back here. You're going to be sitting out there. It's kind of a long distance. So if I walk out there, it's not, it's just because I want to close some space. Got it? We got it? I need you to help me one more time. This is a what? What do we call it? An operator's manual. This is what? This is what? This is the word of God. This is the word of
because we've already prayed. You can go to your seat now. Everybody else, one of these days, God will give you a stage and you will think it's for you. And God will give you a big platform and you will play to the big platform and all God wants you to do is to play to the moment that somebody else is going to be blessed. Being a Christian, it's not really that difficult. It's knowing what page to turn to when your lights come on. And I don't know about you, but I've, I've been riding in my car before, and that yellow light came on, that emergency light. Now, because I've been driving so much, sometimes I've been driving in my car, and it'll start making noise. And you know what I do? Turn up the radio so I don't hear the noise. This week, we're here to talk about a conversation, having a conversation with God. And I have to be real easy with this because I want to tell you all that this is not just something that we're doing to take notes. We're doing this to be prepared for the next level of warfare, the next level of living in God, the next level of saying, okay, God, I trust you. But everything crazy seems to start going on in life. Where is this? And God says, it's, it's, if, it's already in the manual, man. It, it's, it's, it's already written. Some things happen, and they shock us. Some things happen, and we don't get as shocked as we used to because we've been told that it is going to happen if you're on track. Thank you, everybody, for coming. If there are some of you that are listening tonight that are here for the first time, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you understanding the word. So we have talked about having a conversation with God. That's what this is about, and we're learning how to hear from God, how to hear from God, how to hear from God without being afraid once we hear it. Now, let me tell you something before we get into tonight's lesson. When God speaks, it's not going to be spooky bad news. There are some people who will go out and say, God told me to tell you, and whenever they start speaking for God, it's always something scary and, and deadly. That, that's not how God operates, y'all. Satan will have your ear and make you fearful of what God is trying to tell you to save your life and other people. I never said a word to these kids, you're going to die. Some God told me you're going to die. No, God told me you're going to live. But he also let me know that in order for you to live abundantly and to run and to get all your mileage out and so you can, you can have a smooth ride and live more abundantly, you got to understand the manual. Okay. So we're not in competition with anybody's religion, anybody's, anybody's anything tonight. Yes, I believe in this manual. I do. I have to. And at some point, you're going to have to live according to what you believe in this manual. And you won't know it works. There's not a thing in this book that I know will work sometimes until I try it. They'll say, touch this and just hold it in. And you'll go... All this time, that's all I needed to do. I did something the other day in my car as, 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 that I never knew before because I started doing this manual thing and I thought, I'm going to just see. And guess what I did today? I was able to set my radio. No, y'all don't get it. I wanted to get out on the freeway and just, hey. But I, 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 I set my radio. Now, let me tell you how I said it. I said it by accident. But I was on the right page. I was doing the right thing. But I set the wrong station. I said Soul Town. Y'all don't know about that. I didn't know that I had satellite. Listen, y'all don't get this. I know this is like, what's wrong with him? Please give me my moment. I've been having satellite. And when I found out I had like a million channels, you should have seen me slowing down. I was like, no more AM for me, bro. 
on Satellite Rush. And when I found out the stuff that was on Satellite, that was me on the freeway everybody was blowing at today, if that was y'all passing by. Why don't you hurry up, because I'm... All these channels. <laughs> y'all not excited, so y'all already know. But a light went off in me. It didn't go off in you. You're looking like that poor man. But the light's going to go off in somebody tonight. And there may be some adults in here going, yeah. But I want you to get excited that somebody else can get off AM. <laughs> you know, that's okay. I get it. I, I want you to get excited that your parents can finally do Instagram. You don't want them to ever be on your Instagram. Okay. So they, so they don't even want you to know. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. But there was another time I was excited. And that's when I woke up one day and my name was in the telephone book. I remember when our church was finally in the yellow pages. Do y'all know what yellow pages are? <laughs> Man, when you get in the yellow pages, you tell people, you've been on page 572 yet? <clears throat> You finally made it to the yellow pages. Okay. That was exciting. I set my radio. Y'all, all I had to do was hold my finger on it. It's touch screen. And I, I didn't even know it was set. I took it off, and the station stayed on it. You couldn't tell me nothing. Then I started trying to figure out how to check the pressure in my tires because I thought everything, I mean, for real, I've been talking to these kids about this manual, but today I finally opened it up. And I did. I decided I'm just going to use it. And it didn't take long. And I didn't know how to read what I had, but I just looked for it. And please don't think I'm ignorant. I'm just enlightened. And now I'm encouraged. And don't bother me after church. Because I got to go study. Ooh. So, so that's what's going to happen with the word of God for you. And I never, I never, I, I didn't know really how to, how to, we talk about this stuff. But I want to show you according to God's word. It's just right there. And God didn't wait until you had a crisis to put it there. He put it there before your crisis because he knew you would need it. Isn't that awesome? All right. So I want some of you to just get excited. Some of you who work on jobs, get a little excited when other people get hired. I know you to, I know you to lick on your job. I know you to thing. You got several levels of job. But get excited about somebody else just getting an interview. We started Tuesday night, Wednesday night, uh, having a conversation with God because we're learning how to um, hear from God. We, we, we know about the prayer part, talk to God, but we have this breakdown, this meltdown. See, we got the AM and FM, but now the satellite says you can kind of hear your own kind of music. God's going to talk to you the way you understand. And so these notes I'll put on the screen and they'll stay here. And I just want to show you what you missed all those other nights. <laughs> See that? Lost. Oh. Ah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hey, hey, hey. Come on now. Thank you, Lord. Speak, Lord. And so this is where we're going to start tonight. When God's getting ready to speak to you and God talks to you, I'm going to break it down to you. The thing that blocked most of what I needed to hear from God was I was looking for the spectacular. Y'all didn't get it. See, you missed my reaction. When I realized how simple it was to go into satellite, and remember, I didn't even know I had it. 
Because I saw this piece of paper once that said that I had to pay for it. <laughs> so I knew I wasn't going to pay for it. So I knew I didn't have it. What I found out was I did pay for it. And I've been paying for it all these years. And so when I called to find out what was going on, they kind of told me in Christian talk, you had some seeds in the ground. I'm excited because I don't, I don't, I don't want to get all excited about having all these other new channels and they turn them off. But I, I had already paid up front. And they had something. I'm going to let you in my business a little bit. They had something on file called my credit card number. Child, I'm thinking this is brand new and this has been going on, but I wasn't getting the benefits of it. I'm paying for something. Okay, I'm talking loud, but that's, that's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm paying for something that I'm not getting the benefits from. You guys are paying for something and you're not getting the benefit from it. Every piece of criticism you go through, every trial, <laughs> it's already been paid for. But Satan doesn't want us to know the manual. See, in, in other words, some things have to happen so you can trigger other things. Sometimes people have to say wrongful, bad, ignorant, lying things about you so that can trigger your forgiveness. Because at the end of your forgiveness is another major blessing. God didn't just make that up when you found out that people were not who they said they were. It's been there all the time. And you don't really start searching for it until you need it. You get lonely, now you start looking for a man, 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 man. Love, love, love. Looking for love in all the wrong places. I said, love. Yeah. And, and then God will lead you to respect, respect, respect. And you go, okay, don't need a man, man, man. You know, because it, it, it's right there. He said, seek first me. And if that's what you need right now, That'll be added. And when it's added, it shouldn't be a distraction. Y'all keep me on track, seriously, okay? Y'all keep me on track. Keep pastor on track so I can stay simple. So now let's talk about this point of not looking for the spectacular when God's going to talk. Now when I came to you tonight and I wanted to pray with you because God led me to do it. He just spoke to my heart, pray for the kids first. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't ask for the cymbals to roll and the drums. I know that. I love hot church. But it was kind of dry, wouldn't you think? If you bring all those kids down, there should be some. some oh, come, Lord Jesus, fall down right now. Right now. Turn it up. Turn it up. Something. No. And so right now, if I wanted to talk to you and I started this great buildup, you would think, my God. Every time I talk, I have to be loud. And God says, no, don't look for the spectacular. So here is a scripture that we started talking about, and I got to go quickly on this one. This scripture that we started talking about started helping us to understand that there was a woman in the Bible. Her name was Jezebel. She was a professional preacher killer. Don't look at people. Just And so the man of God was used to just bring down a lot of false prophets. He was just used to just speak the word. And God's man was just teaching simplicity. And they thought, we got to shut him up. And they couldn't shut him up because every time they would try to shut him up, he would use the word of God on them. Because he would fight. 
because God anoints fighters. But in this particular case, this, this, this servant of God, this prophet of God needed to hear from God. God, tell me what to do. He was tired of running, tired of being chased, tired of being hit in the back of the head by total strangers. And so God started to speak to him. And that's how we came to that scripture that we were reading uh, last night. God told him, and here it is. Now, 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 and I'm reading this because I have to build up to where we're going tonight because we're going to start to understand how to hear from God. He was told, go stand on the mountain at attention before God. And here's what he said. God said, God will pass by. All right, stand at attention. Instructions, instructions. Whenever God's getting ready to talk to you, he's going to give you some instructions. Because the one thing Satan will not do is obey God. So that's going to be one of those first things that starts to separate when God's getting ready to use you. If we said, come here and stand and raise your right hand. Somebody's like, man, I ain't raising my right hand. I'll stand up there. Okay, right now, that starts to separate those that say, Lord, I'm willing for you to use me. Y'all get it yet? You still there? So he's going to give some instructions. He said, go and stand on the mountain at attention before God. God will pass by. Then a hurricane wind ripped through those mountains. <laughs> Man, it came so strong and it shattered all the rocks. Just tore up stuff. Now he's trying to get a word from who? God. So you know that must be God. That hurricane came through, tore up the rocks, created a mess. But God wasn't to be found in the wind. All that's showing out. No God. And he's just sitting there waiting on God. After the wind, an earthquake. Earthquake, really? The whole place rumbled. He's sitting on that mountain before God, and an earthquake comes. We, in this region of this part of the world, I, I don't know, I've never felt an earthquake and so some people have, but I've never felt an earthquake. And, and, and at the earthquake, you would think, oh, my God, as the ground is moving now, whoo, ha, ha, must be God, must be God. How you know? Because I felt the earth move under my feet. Bible said, but God wasn't in the earthquake. Now I just come through this terrible hurricane. And this earthquake waiting on you to speak, God, and you didn't show out. And after the earthquake, fire. Now, the last time there was fire, he burnt all these prophets. I mean, God just, God used fire, he was just boom. And so you have a hurricane, you have an earthquake, and you have fire. But according to God's word, God wasn't in the fire. And then after all of that, a gentle and quiet, your, your Bible may say a still, quiet voice. A still, quiet voice. All of that showing out. That wasn't God. And, and so most people believe that they're not hearing from God because your head didn't turn all the way around. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't want to get into all that. <laughs> and so tonight God is saying, don't look for the spectacular. And so I'm not knocking anybody else's thing, but I've just been living long enough to know that some people will make noise so that others can't hear God. Right. Satan will put you around noise so that you can hear noise and not hear God. Been there, done that. What's wrong with the sensational? I know it's told from last night. Primarily, it takes no faith to respond to the sensational. Okay. I'm going to give you a little test. Um, somebody stand up real quick. 
Just, okay, you want to, give, give me a beat, 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 with your hands. Y'all hear that? Yeah, you hear it? Okay. Most people would have got on beat with me. Look, look, she's changed because of the sensation. I never told her to change. She was right from the beginning because hers came from faith. But when the noise overwhelmed hers, she changed her beat. Don't get trapped up by the sensational. You were doing fine because yours came from a quiet inside. But when I gave a different beat and I gave a different rumble and the people started, all right now, you changed it. Thank you. Some of you are ready to hear from God, but God is not showing out. He's not smacking his lips. He's not doing the, the finger thing like that. There is a difference. It takes no faith to respond to sensational stuff. You're supposed to. You ever been in a parade and it was cold and when the band started coming close to you, you saw them coming down the street and it was cold and when the band gets close to you, You start changing, you're changing your mood. Why? Because the band's getting closer. Now, you had, the, that band has been coming for a long time. And you could have cheered them on, but you, you were quiet until they got close to you. And you could actually see them and hear them, and you changed. And, and so a lot of people say, it's not God if you don't feel it. We're not talking about having a massage by God tonight. We're talking about having a conversation. We all know in this room that God only like, listens and likes two kinds of music, and that's gospel and Stevie Wonder. That's all God likes. Amen. I don't care if you don't believe that. <laughs> he kept healing blind people. Oh, just messed up. <laughs> but when I want to hear God, really, I have to turn Stevie down. Because I can't hear God through Boom, 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 boom. No, I can't. Because that song is working with my flesh. So now I'm going to try to put God on my rhythm. I wish those days would come. And then we try to make it a Christian song. Because I love you, Lord. If you would just get quiet before him, God says, don't try to make me like a showcase because I'm going to talk to you in the quiet moments. So now, now, let's go tonight. Enough. Let's go tonight because I had to make sure that you understood where we were because some of you have never been here before and some of you online may be here and your ears can be critical and all that. And I'm, I'm okay with all of that stuff, but we have to teach now, these are the keys to hearing from God. I'm not saying these are the only keys. I'm not saying I made up my own set of keys and you got it. 
But over the years, we, we, we've come to realize that whether we're praying about major issues or very simple issues, we need the voice of the Lord. And it doesn't matter if the issues are big, um, if God says, this is a big issue, so you got to, you got to listen louder. I'm going to be more dramatic. Logic says that God would talk more dramatically with big decisions and God would be less enthused on small decisions, but he does not. Your issue is with your hair. Your issue is with your car. Your issue is with your family. Your issue is with your, your mother's health. Your issue is with... To, to God, you, you can't say to someone else, your stuff is, is so big, you got to, you got to, God's going to talk real loud over this. No. No. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit doesn't change. All he requires is stand up, babe. Let me, let me, let me, let me feel your beat again. Do it quieter. Less than that. See, that's still her faith. Look at her. I, I have to actually look at her to see if she's participating. Let me hear it loud. Louder. Louder. More dramatic. Get some other people involved, baby. Y your people are off. They're off. They're off. They're off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Faith is acting. One more time. Stand up. Tell me to come here. Louder. Come here. Call me. Okay, stop clapping. Call me. Talk to me. Show me your desperation. Pastor Russ, come here. Come, I mean, come on, baby. Put some juice on it now. This is me. Pastor Russ, can you come here, please? Can you come here? Pastor Russ? You need to back up off me. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. okay, this time, don't call me. Don't say a word. Can't hear you. You see, what her quietness did was arrested my attention. You see, if God's got to be always so loud and dramatic, now he's got to over talk you cussing out your boyfriend. God said, if you'll stop cussing him out, you'll hear me saying, hush. And I, I use cussing for people that don't go to church. I was just saying something. I know you're okay. But did you see that? See, as long as she was loud, I didn't really have to focus on her. But when she got quiet, she still needed me, but she changed how she called me. We want God to compete with all the other noise in our lives. What did we learn a couple of days ago? He's not going to talk to you through all that confusion and strife. Satan will do something to cause you to react now. He's got you calling people, saying stuff out loud, responding back to things that the enemy has done to try to call you away from your faith. And God is saying, just be still and see the salvation of the Lord. I, I'd, never, I'd never experienced this the other day. I, I had this thing I was teasing with, with my grandson, just messing with him, messing with him, and just tickling him because I was just tickling him. I was just, and finally, when I was tickling him, that boy jumped up in the bed and said, Peace be still. <laughs> How you gonna peace be still, your grandpa, dude? See, that ain't even in the rules. <laughs> But I tell you what, I broke down. All right, man, quit. You play too much. 
Faith is acting on that still, small voice that we hear. There's going to be a still, small voice that's going to come to your life. You know, this is not convention talk. This is personal talk. Now, I believe there should be a convention all over the world, and maybe after this is spoken, people with louder megaphones will be able to help us get there. But a person can get shot and killed that we don't know of and call millions of people to stand in the streets. Because we know that it's just not justice. And I think it's just as unjust for us to know that we've been traveling all these years with a satellite. And we stuck on AM. You, you, all you think that we have to do is come to church, sing loud, perform. God says, Go to satellite, and I got a whole bunch of ways I can talk to you. All right, let's talk about some of the ways. You can hear from God. Here's some keys to hearing from God. Don't demand that his voice be sensational. Don't. Don't demand that his voice be sensational. I'm going to go fast, y'all. So write it down, share with the note with a neighbor, and y'all keep it on the screen. Now, our big screen in the middle, we're working on it. Um, of course, you have to constantly upgrade when you have uh, technology and contemporary equipment. So we here at this church, I don't want y'all to think the tires are kind of low. So you just get two screens this week. <laughs> you know, it's just... <laughs> Amen. But when your stuff is made in Japan, you got to wait till it come back from Japan. All right. One of the screens had made on Harry Hines, but they, they didn't have them. No. All right. Okay. Don't, if you, if you take a picture of this, write in your notes, it, it rarely will be. I, I'm not saying that it won't be, but, but it, it rarely will be all sensational. You, you know your parents. And when your parents want you to do something, you know, there's a, there's a rule that we learn. Do it the first time. You, you don't want mom or dad to have to go elevate it. Amen? And when some of you became born again, you decided to change your speech pattern with your kids. Yes. Okay? Now, that's, here we go. That's, num that's number one. Now, there's no particular order, but I want to just break some things down to help you hear from God. That's all we're doing. All right? Number two, reject the spirit of failure. Reject the spirit of failure. Now, if I go too fast on any of these, please tell me to back up. There are, these are the keys to hearing from God. Reject the fear of failure. See, you, you, let me say this. When you're talking to God and, and you're wanting God to talk back, you're going to hear me say something, but you got to keep it in context. That's why you have to be in church. This is one area in your life where you are free to fail. What? I thought failure was not an option. That's why some people go around faking it. This is the one area in your life that you're free to fail. But you're not free to be irresponsible. If you thought it was God and it wasn't, admit it. Just admit it when you, when you thought you heard God. But the outcome of it proves that you didn't hear from God. You had this great idea, you told everybody it was God, the thing went completely bad. Just admit it, I wanted to hear from him so bad. Okay, stand up and do your faith clap, the quiet one. The quiet one. See, I want so bad to prove that I, that I hear her, I got it wrong. So, everybody over here, do like me. So, we all got it. But that's not what she's doing. 
Y'all stop. I missed it. Somebody's going to call you fake if you stop them. Doesn't matter. God's going to call you obedient, and they'll end up calling you blessed. Sometimes you miss it. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Sometimes you miss it. You want so bad to hear from him. But you, you got to reject the spirit of failure. Okay? The, the, the next thing. Another key to hearing from God. Stay stirred up. Don't let your Sagittarius, Capricorn, Pisces man <laughs> mess with you. But don't let your spirit get into a dormant state. Y'all ever heard of a, um, the worms? What are those worms? They look still till they get warm. I fed them to lizards for years. Wow. Say it again. The, the, uh, y'all, it's a simple word. You know the thing. Mealworms. Thank you. Oh, thank God for country people. Y'all don't know nothing. No, so a mealworm, you can just let it sit. A meal, this is going to sound horrible. But a mealworm, the way, you keep mealworms, if you're feeding other animals, like birds or, or lizards or something, you keep mealworms in your refrigerator. I didn't say you put them in a sandwich. You just keep them in your refrigerator. <laughs> you put them in a container. You put them in a refrigerator, and they just sit like this. They never move. You would think they're dead. Yeah, you probably wouldn't care, but you would think they're dead. And so when you put them out and they warm up, they just start moving. They lie dormant because they're cold. They survive by faking life when they're cold. But if they get warm, they can't hide being alive. Oh, I watch folk in church sometimes. You want everybody to see how mad you are, and you just faking it. You know God is burning up inside of you. You got all these gifts. But you're not attractive because you won't work it. Stay stirred up. Stop letting people steal your hallelujah. No, no, no. Now, come on. Yeah, we, you got to stop. You know, well, I just, it's just some things going on, and I'm, tr I'm thinking about it. And now you want to sit up in service and act all interesting. I've been noticing things. You're so interesting. God says, stop. And get interested. You got to keep stirred up. Prayer and praise will stir up the still small voice of God. Prayer and praise. Young people, what's one way of praising God? Show me. Y'all look, get it? Okay, see so if you don't know. That's just one way. Can anybody give me another way? There you go. Can anybody give me another way? See, see, so you guys know it. And if your stuff is jacked up, it's because you, it's in the manual. You, why are you stuck on AM? You're built with satellite. You got more channels than you realize. Y'all just went through three or four things. Kids over here looking like, where did they get that from? The manual. Sitting in church looking like they're asleep, parents thinking they're not asleep, or they're asleep, they'll get it the whole time. Because faith comes by what? And the only way you have a reason, and if you have a reason to stay dormant, is you don't hear. That's why when you come in here, I don't pay attention to people acting like they're all chilling. Because at some point, once you hear it, you know it. And when you have to recall it, it's in. And so what we have to do to, 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 to start hearing from God is you have to stay stirred up. Don't let your inner man, don't let that spirit get into a dormant state. And then you come in church and you'll hear people talk about how dead service is. Service is not dead. You are treating it dead. 
That's why it's hard for some people to praise God because you haven't practiced it until church. And if the wrong people sit by you, they're going to keep you cold. But they'll learn next time sitting by you, you're going to have to warm up over here. This is where the worm's getting down. This is, this is the worm section right here, baby boy. This is the worm section right here. Hey, I ain't sitting next to her. She moved too much, but you better go on to the balcony because I'm going to rock this whole front row. I'm going to rock this whole section B in a few minutes. And you need to wash your feet because I'm taking my shoes off next Sunday. Y'all get it? We went to the office the other day and, and we had some tea up in the office. Um, they're sitting in the office and the tea had been there. Um, Brother Carlos thought it was fresh, but it had been there a couple of days. <laughs> and he looked at it and the tea kind of different because the tea was brown at the top, but it was white at the bottom. What was that white at the bottom? Sugar. Sugar. So what needed to happen to that sugar? That's all I got to say. So I couldn't find the spoon, and you know, Bible said lay hands on the sick. So he went in there, and I got that stick. <laughs> now I'm just playing, y'all. I'm just playing. I, but I didn't have a spoon. I just took anything that was long in there and stirred it up for him because he wanted some sweet tea. But because it had been sitting, and that wasn't two days, it was just sitting all, that whole day, because it was sitting, it separated. So sometimes just sitting, you separate. And so you have to stir up. If, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about if you want to hear from God. Don't, don't, stop trying to make God s taste sweet in all your bitterness. You know you're mad, you know you're angry, you know you're frustrated, you know you got all these things going on that you can't stand. And God is constantly blessing you. And you think that because you're being blessed, you're maxing out. No, let me tell you how you know you're maxing out. When you can take everything you have, give it to everybody you know, end up with nothing and still lacking nothing. No, no, y'all think blessing is just having stuff. No, blessing is when you can give stuff away and it doesn't affect the way you praise him. And when God says, give it away, he doesn't mean sell it cheap. You would be surprised at what would happen to your bank account if you would stir it up again. Can we go to the next one? What are we trying to learn here? What are we learning tonight? Some of the keys to what? Hearing from God. Are we okay so far? Is anybody confused about this? Okay. Now, it's important that you hear from God because God is going to start speaking to you about how to be a blessing and a benefit and a bigger help to ministry. God is not interested in you trying to find somebody to go to a, on a date with. That's not, this is bigger than date. Don't get that? Okay, because you go start posting this stuff and, and, and people are trying to do stuff that they want to hear God say, him, uh-uh, that one. Let's go to the next one. Your, your spirit will be dormant if you haven't prayed for several days. And now you're trying your best to Make God work, 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 work on your behalf. And you haven't, you just haven't prayed for several days. You just, you just haven't. And, and you come to church, speak, Lord. God said, um, him heard from you. Him heard from you. And, and because of what you're doing, I, I need some time to hear from you so I can prepare you for what I'm about to say to you. Okay? Okay. The next one. Another key to hearing from God. You want to hear from God? You, you don't sometimes hear from God because the spoken word, you want to hear from God because, and I put this in a different form, the, the spoken word is, is so creative. 
when you start to hear from God. It's so creative. And, 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 and here's the deal. The devil hates the fact that you, that you hear from God. You have to realize this. He hates the fact that you hear from God. He doesn't like the fact that you hear from God. Because when God speaks, it's, it's, it's going to be so creative. Go find some parent. There you go. He wants to make sure that you don't hear from God. Why do we want to hear from God? Now, I probably should have given you more lead on, but I'm just hoping you post these and just keep it there with your notes. The spoken word is so creative. The devil hates the fact that you hear from God. He hates that. Remember, remember, we all can remember this because we know it. He used to be where you are. He was the number one praiser. Now God is talking to you and not him. And he understands that when God speaks, things change. And you got to resist him when he opposes your prayer. And when he opposes your listening to God, because he will tell you, you don't have time to listen to God. You need to move now. You, you need to move now. You need to move now. And that's sometimes how we get in a, a great deal of trouble. You just say, well, I'll, I'll go now. And, and you've got to resist when the devil is telling you to stop listening to God. It's, it's taking God too long. Let's, let's get back into it. The next thing I want you to, to, to kind of write down is a, is a different thing here. I, I, I probably didn't need this. But recognize the mind as the greatest obstacle to hearing. If you can get past this stuff in between your ears, you're going to be all right. But the mind is the greatest obstacle in hearing from God. You got to recognize the mind as the greatest obstacle to hearing from God. Then you have to exercise your spirit here. How do you exercise your spirit? With thanksgiving. You exercise your spirit with praise. You exercise your spirit with prayer. So you have to build up your hearing muscle. You know, these are words I'm making up, so I'm just trying to make it simple. But you have to build up your hearing muscle. You build up your hearing muscle with thanksgiving. How do we do that? Just, just right now where you are, just, um, and we can do it as, a, as a, just a, a little project to just learn. Because growing up, I always heard, hear God speaking, hear. And I, I was trying. I was trying, but I was trying to hear God in their language. Okay, so this is how you strengthen your hearing muscle. First of all, with thanksgiving. Not with complaintsgiving, but with thanksgiving. So, so let's just do this together. Let's just say, Lord, I thank you so much for today. Okay, a lot happened today. See, a lot of stuff went wrong, and people don't need to know that. But I just want to, I just, since, since I know you hear me, God, I want you to hear me say, Lord, I thank you so much for right now. Okay, okay. And, 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 and then, and then just while, while you're doing that, you know, the Bible said lift up holy hands, right? Okay, so, so let's just put both of those two together. When you say that phrase, or whatever phrase you want to say, you can, whatever way you want to thank Lord, thank you for my TV, or whatever, whatever you want to say. But lift, lift your hands at the same time with that. Ready? Go. Okay, now, do that without me hearing you. Okay? Now, speak it out of your mouth, though, because if it gets stuck in your mind, you're not doing it. Because you shall not have what you think. You shall have what you But I don't want you to get in competition with everybody else. Right now, Lord, thank you. You've been in church when folk had them shouting contests. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Praise him in the temple, the sanctuary. Come now, Lord, stay here, Jesus. You've been in church with that lady over here hollering, this lady hollering, both of them about to pass out. <laughs> Strengthen me, Jesus, shut up! They just finally start getting in the flesh, man. Okay, 
So I'm going to give you a combination of the two. We're going to thank God and we're going to praise him. What are we trying to do right here? I don't want you to think I'm just having fun because I am. I have great, great fun obeying and teaching his word. What are we trying to get you to do? Why are we going through this stuff? Okay, because right now I want to teach you how to build up your hearing muscles. Now, I don't know what a hearing muscle is, but I'm just trying to make that as simple as I can. Because in order for you to get ready to hear from God, you have to prepare yourself. Okay? And the mind is the greatest obstacle. Because the mind will tell you, this ain't going to happen. Pastor Russ got y'all tripping. Pastor Russ got y'all. You got both hands up and y'all don't have no refrigerator. You get it? He'll mess with you. Because what he doesn't want you to know is, when those hands go down, the refrigerator's already in the manual. But you've been on an AM relationship with God. Y'all got this satellite refrigerator waiting on you to get ready to hear God say, just ask for it. <laughs> Make any sense? Really? For real? Y'all really getting it? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so let's practice the thanksgiving and praise at the same time. Ready? Thank God for something. This is everybody. Don't just look at kids because y'all really know you need it to. Okay. Ready? Thank him for something and praise him. Now, I'm just saying do this in front of me. You know he don't go up to people and go, hallelujah, Father. Okay. This is just, I just want you to get used to it. Some of you have gotten so used to being dormant and the music's got to be loud and stuff got to be thumping for you to say we had good church. Preacher got to preach today. I talked to a preacher today. He said, man, I ended up in a hospital with a seizure and a stroke because I preached so hard on Easter. I told y'all, God told me Easter Sunday morning, chill right now. I need you to stop, oh, hallelujah. I need you to stop service right now, the biggest Sunday of the year. Don't speak another word. Stop. We were doing communion. He said, stop and offer an invitation to Jesus. And I'm going, God, this is when we really <laughs> need a lot of people to join church. He said, stop. Don't preach. Don't put your word on it at all. Listen to me. And I'm sitting right there. And I, some of you were here and you heard me. God is telling me right now to just stay right here and talk about healing and being saved. And I did that. We got out of church at 12. People were coming in. I wanted to get a sign, drop offerings here. But he didn't speak that part. I just obeyed what he said, as strange as it was. And some people are like, I think he's losing the anointing. A sister joined church that morning, had never been to church as a member of a church in 68 years. She joined church Easter Sunday morning. She died Sunday. I buried her today. I didn't preach. He did. And he told me, you chill, it's my show. I got somebody I need to talk to because she's on her way out of here. And she came down, she joined this church, she got baptized this Sunday, she was alive one week and six days after she joined church, two weeks, got baptized Sunday, died Sunday night, buried her today. Because God said, I need to talk to you with all this noise going on. And you got to keep your ear muscle strong. Your mind will tell you, man, you better get down and preach this Sunday morning. This Easter Sunday morning. People are going to be impressed with you, Ricky Russ. They're going to come back because you got the throne down today. You know how we do it. My pastor friend told me, man, I had to go to the hospital for three days after Easter. Because Easter Sunday morning will kill you. You talking about Jesus rose, you out. <laughs> Do y'all get it? Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Lord, for a great day. Say thank you, Lord, for another day. See, when you start thanking God, you start thinking God. And that hand going up is just... That's just, that's just one way to praise. Okay, now say that same thing, and this time because the Bible tells us to praise him also in our hand clap, y'all. That's what we said, right? Say that same thing now and just clap to just God. Ready, go. 
No, say that. Say, Lord, okay, not, not like give God an applause. <laughs> I don't care. You can do it any way you want to. But another way is like if you're praising, like, thank you, Father, for just an awesome day. It's just because praising comes in your clap. And see, and then, look, God is not country western. What y'all doing? <laughs> <That's> not, <laughs> but all of a sudden, when you're in service, you don't seem to be so awkward because the wrong person sit by you or the wrong person's face flashed up on the screen or something happened in service and turned you off. It didn't turn you off. You were never tuned in. You got all this radio in your life and you don't have the power to get off the angry channel. You missed that, didn't you? So those are the three ways, those are the two ways, I'm going to give you the last one here, the two ways to get your hearing muscle ready. Thanksgiving, praise, and of course prayer. And prayer is just conversation with God. Now, thank him first. Praise him any way you want, okay? because there's a way to stand and praise. We go through all of that. Now, just tell God something. Just tell him. Just, just pray to him. Just, just make up something and say, Lord, uh, you're so merciful, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm praying for more strength. Just say that. So, so, Lord, you're so merciful, and I'm praying for more strength. So I'm just giving you just a model, just something, because you, know, you know what you'll pray for. Now what you're doing is setting yourself up for God to respond. And so don't be surprised if 4.15 in the morning you get up. <sighs> Mama, what you doing? I think I'm going to run around the mall for a minute. I thought you said your back was hurting and your pressure was up. It was. But I just feel like running. Because you thanked him. You praised him. You asked him for strength. <laughs> Every morning of your life you get up late. But this particular morning you up early. And somebody's going to ask you what got into you. And then you're going to start telling that natural lie. Must be that tea I'm drinking. No, it's that tea you stirred. Remember? Are we okay? And we're on number five, so it didn't do any good to just come in here all this week and me to let you know you can without walking you through when you do that. So that's just all on your side notes. Recognize the mind. That's going to be the greatest obstacle you'll have because your mind is going to tell you, I can't believe it. I cannot do this. This is not working for me. That's your mind. It's extremely important, number six, to pray in the spirit. Now, I am not going to go through that tonight, but to pray in the Spirit, let me break it down. Praying in the Spirit, your, your prayer language opens the human spirit to heal the Lord now. So when you start praying in the Spirit, that's when you don't know what you're praying, you don't know who you're forgiving, because there are some people that I can get so angry with, I don't want to forgive them, I don't want to talk to them. But when I pray in the spirit, young people, there's a phrase you'll hear us talk about later. And it'll be like something we'll start doing like three or four nights. We'll just come in here and we're just going to learn it. It's, it's called speaking in tongues. Okay? And when you pray in the spirit, it's, 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 it's what will make you, make you. And I'm gonna, I'm, I don't mean to cross the natural with the spirit, but it's, it's kind of like this. It'll make you get a car before you have driver's license but it won't allow you to drive it because you're illegal. It'll, it'll, it'll have some things revealed in the manual, like David, okay, stand up David, right here, stand up David. Okay, you will be king, okay? <laughs> Everybody laugh at that. See, that's what the prophet told David. You will be king. Do you feel like a king right now? Nope. <laughs> so God must have the wrong man. See, the dumb part would be for me to put him on the throne like this. He cannot fight a president of a nation like this. But that doesn't stop God in the manual from saying, you will be king. Now, the rest of your life, he will start to prepare you by things that are happening in your life to be able to rule kingdoms. One of the first things that God did to me early in life was teach me how to handle disappointments and loss. 
because I didn't realize that the rest of my life, I would always be confronted with people or things that would leave me. And those things that would leave me would make me think that I was not worthy for what was next. When in reality, I wasn't even worthy for what was present. It was his grace. So I became stronger and stronger and stronger. And disappointments still come and they still challenge me. But I no longer take people leaving my life as a sign of my failure. And it happened as a boy. Because at 10 years old, I'm just going to say this, you know, he's saying, you will be pastor. Now, I didn't hear that, but I'm, he told David, you will be king. So when you start praying in the spirit, now God, thank you, sir, strengthens you in areas that you don't know you're weak. For instance, if you pray in the spirit, your cancer will go away before they x-ray you. When you pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will say, don't go to sleep. And you're yawning. Now, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, and, and I don't mean to cross a line, but I, I, I want to cross this line because you need to understand the relevance of it. I'm one of these people that when I go to sleep, I go to sleep. I don't play. Mm -mm. When I go to sleep, it's like my eyes are stitched. That is it. It is finished. <laughs> the other night, the Holy Spirit said, stay awake. And I am so tired. I get a call at about 3, 10 a.m., maybe, 3, 10, Felicia. Pastor, I'm, I'm in the emergency room. God, is this why you have me up? I said, I'm not coming. I'm not in the condition to come, but I'm in the position to pray. Get off the phone, get it together, see you tomorrow night at church. It wasn't my prayer, it was her preparation. But sometimes God will say, don't rest yet. I got one more thing I need you to do. And it's not about you getting credit. It's about you ushering someone else in. And see, when you pray in the Spirit, you don't have the consciousness to be mad at people because when they call you, you got to work the works of him that sent you while it is three. Somebody said, joy cometh in the morning. See, that's what the Bible said. Joy cometh in the what? Morning. Three o'clock a.m. is what? Morning. But outside it looks like what? Good night. So, we need to learn to pray in the Spirit because to pray in the Spirit means I'm praying for what my spirit is going to communicate to God. Okay, right now, you know where your cousin is. Is he or she in trouble? So, if you pray in the Spirit, and I know that may sound different, but if you speak in tongues, if you pray in the Spirit, you just ask God to cover your cousin. Now, you don't know you did because that's your spirit talking to the spirit of God on behalf of your cousin's spirit. That's what that means. And I can't control it in the natural because I'm mad at my cousin. That's what she deserved. So I'm, I'm not going to pray for her now. I'll make that simple soon, I promise. But when you pray in the spirit, everybody say, speak in tongues. Say it over here, speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. To make the illustration clearer, just one more little bit for you. If you go to a restaurant and a person comes to your table, and I like to use this one because it'll make you understand it. And, and people are always talking about your generation and how we're losing the young people. We're not using, losing the young people. We're not making them as aware of the, as the world is. See, the world is telling you you have satellite. We're playing like satellite is a sin. <laughs> And the world is making satellite look fun. And God is making satellite look like, I need you to reach more people. So what we're doing now is teaching you how to live and not die. Suicide will come to you, suicidal thoughts, but they'll go thought. And your spirit will say, not here. 
not even for the friend who didn't tell you he was thinking about it. But it's like this. So you go to a restaurant, a waiter comes to the table, and the waiter serves you a plate. Let's play restaurant for a minute. Who wants to be the waiter? Quickly. Come on, quick. Okay, put a hair net on. Don't come up here with all that. There you go. No, I'm just teasing. So I'm sitting here eating. You're the, wait, you're the waitress. Okay, you take my order. Okay, um, I'd like some steak and a steak and some potatoes and some green beans and some corn and some tomatoes and, uh, and some sweet teas. Okay? Okay. Okay. You got it? All right. So go. Where are you going to take my order, by the way? Where are you taking? Where are you going with that? To the, to the who? To the, to the chef. Go find the chef. Quick, quick, quick. Find the chef. Okay, so you got to the chef. Chef fixes it, right? Give it back to her. Give her my order. She brings it back, okay? You put the plate right here, okay? Okay, now you go on. I'm eating. Mm, this is so good. This is so good. And then you come back to get my money. It's just so good. I want to give you a tip. I'm going to give you a $100 tip because that was so good. You are so welcome. Thank you. Okay, you're still, I'm going to come back. Boy, this was good. Thank you so much. And you do what? Go on about your business. So who did I thank? The waitress. But who cooked the steak? The chef. When you pray, we use the name of Jesus because when we pray to Jesus, he gives our order to God. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Jesus, I need... A car. Okay. Who are you going to take it to? The chef. That's God. Go. Speak on my behalf. Say, God, Ricky needs a car. Okay. God says, here, give him the car. Hurry, girl, bring the car. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Who gave me the car? God. But who got the praises? So me and Jesus tight because I pray, right? Speaking in tongues is this. I don't talk to Jesus. I go directly to God. Let me show you why this is important. Jesus, I need um, a truck, okay? Where are you going with that? To God. Go, go, go. Bring my stuff back. Hurry, 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 hurry. Bring stuff back. Stop her. Don't let her get to me. Forget it. I was been praying. Jesus didn't answer my prayer. That's why I don't believe in that Jesus stuff anyway. See, that's why I don't believe in that. I've been waiting four years for a call. I'm discouraged. I lose my what? Faith. Why? Because Jesus didn't show up. He's still on the way. But when you pray in the spirit and in tongue, you go straight to God. Satan cannot block it. Satan can intercept it. Satan can interfere with it. See, some of you don't believe in God or Jesus because what you ask for is taking so long. You're using the right formula, but your natural is getting in the way. When you speak in tongue, your natural has no way of interfering with it because Satan does no good. He, he cannot intercept when you talk directly to the chef. And so the problem in most of our lives, you've never talked to God before. You've never talked to God before. And that's why it's so easy for someone to tell you he doesn't exist. Now, thank you so much. You can have a seat. Let me ask you a question. This may be a little embarrassing. Has anyone here never, ever met your natural father before? Your natural father. Your daddy. Never met him before. See, if you never met him before, it's easy for somebody to tell you he's dead. If you never had a conversation with him, it's easy for someone to tell you he died before you were born. So, so many people are telling you there is no God. Because you've never had a conversation with him. You've talked to Jesus. This is why Satan does not want you to pray in the spirit. Because your spirit talks to God. And your natural can't get in the way. That was a lot. Y'all get it? And so, if you talk to God in spirit, 
how is God going to talk to you? Ah, now you get to go to Skyline. Yeah, he's going to talk to you in spirit. But if you never know that God can talk to you in spirit, you don't anticipate it. You keep listening to God to always talk to you on AM. Next Tuesday, God says, I'm going to talk to you on satellite. God, I don't have satellite. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But you were never told that. So you stayed on AM. And on AM, how does it sound on AM? <laughs> See, that's static. Y'all already know. God, I don't know if I'm supposed to work here. <laughs> you got to get all by trees. Touch the tree with your toe and the car. Pick up a frequency. And that's all that static that happens in our lives. And we're trying to say, well, I asked God, but I'm not getting an answer. And it could be like simple nights like tonight. Well, I kind of went there. I just thought we were going to have church. And look already in this hour and a half where God has said that if you would just listen to it. Now you're interested. If I were to tell you that I can, as God teaches us to learn how to pray in the spirit, that if you do that, you go to the hospital. You got a very serious case. Everything on all your blood counts and everything is reading bad. But they can't find anything wrong. And you keep going back because you say, mm -mm, they're not telling me something. <laughs> it ain't showing up. Your natural man gave you all the wrong signs, but your conversation with God healed you. There is also a point in that when Satan tries to hide something to let it grow so it can kill you. And that's when your Holy Spirit will say, keep going back. He's trying to play games. And you go back and back and back until they find it, cut it out, and you're healed. This takes a little bit of conversation, but this is why God wanted me to pray over some of you tonight because that, that's a little monster out there called death that has made an appointment with you. Death wants you dead because once you start using this, see, you are the connection between this next generation and God. And it just ain't going to come, y'all, because we know how to stone and we know how to dance and prance. God says greater works than this you will do. So, I guess my last few notes here will say, expect for God to speak. You gotta walk away with some expectation. Okay, God, I don't know what you're gonna say, and I don't even know how you're gonna sound, and I don't even know when you're gonna do it, and I don't know where it's gonna happen. Everybody say, I expect to hear from you, God. Say it again. A few years ago, this property was just here. It was grass. God spoke to me and said, get some kids. Because grown folk are kind of burnt out. And, and we have turned into these sight creatures. We got to see stuff before we tie it. We got to see stuff. God said, take some children and go into the property. And the property didn't belong to us. It didn't belong to us. So trespass. Go across the street. Go in those fields, because this was nothing but tall grass, tall grass. Take kids and pray in the fields. Now, we look like children of the corn. I'm just trying to tell you right now. <laughs> and so I'm like, God. You ever notice that sometimes you start praying for stuff, you just look at different bell buns. For, and it's like, this is bad. So here's Ricky Rush going across the street praying with these little kids, and we're just walking out there. I don't know if any of these kids are in here tonight. Some of y'all remember that? I knew you kid. So you, Y'all were some of those kids? And so, Billy, you were here. And we came over, and God said, get on the knees. And he said, just tell the children to tell me what they want. And they start telling God what we want. Now, we don't own this property. We don't even belong. Our African selves own the property. <laughs> and God said, okay, do the ugly thing. And they got down in the grass. And they just start praying and telling God, God, we want a school. We wanted this, and we wanted that, 
and all that. And I said, tell God y'all want to pay for it. And well, we want to pay for it. <clears throat> <laughs> Sounded crazy. People called it a cult. <laughs> but God called it obedience. Now, I didn't get that because I was told to pray for it. But as I prayed in the spirit, I prayed for the building of the kingdom. And so God started giving me unusual, weird things. I'm just going to call it that. God started giving me satellite vision and say, you've got to get the church off AM. And you all are sitting on the satellite blessing right now. All the humans were saying, we don't need that. We just got a new building. We just moved into a new building. We don't need it. That's greedy. And God didn't move us to Oak Cliff to have church there. He moved us to Oak Cliff to have church here. And he had to show us the way here by leading us a step at a time and dropping people who had no vision for the future. Because most people say, I'm just grateful for where I am. I don't care where the other generation goes. I don't care if another kid goes to high school. I don't care if another kid goes to junior high school. I don't care if kids go to school and get shot. That's what other people are saying. I don't care if kids can get cursed out and molested and teachers molesting kids and raping little boys and messing with little girls. I don't care about that. My son is grown. And God has to talk to somebody who will say, I got to get them to the next phase while God is raising someone to take us to the next generation. And that comes when we start to hear from God. Is, is, is everybody okay with this? I mean, are we really clearly understanding? And that's when God said to me, I want you to teach. Don't preach for a minute. I want you to teach. I need it to be simple because preaching gives a time limit. It gives us organ and something in the middle. The spirit is high because I love the spirit and God knows he loves us to praise and worship him. But sometimes people are watching you and not listening to God. Tonight, you've been listening to God. I didn't give you people to watch. I've, I've watched about four services today in different places, and God had me tuning in to what the children were doing while the man of God or the preacher was really, and the people having a good time. The kids were like... Now, now I still say they were hearing and they were being blessed, but sometimes God is speaking to the next Joshua or the next Moses. And saying, you will be king, so watch how you sit, watch how you speak, start watching what you wear, because you never know when you're going to get called up front. Start watching your modesty, and then watch to see how are those around me acting as if they're going to be called. When you start hearing from God and expect God to speak, and you know I'm trying to get to my last one here. If you start feeling condemned that the devil is going to try to convince you of all of your sins, how dare you want to talk to God because you know what you've been doing and you know what you've done. If you start operating in all of that condemnation, Satan's going to tell you, God's not going to talk to you. You feel condemnation that the devil tries to convince us is from God because he'll tell you this is from God putting you in check. Then you will stop expecting to hear from God because you'll say, Lord, I know I've been bad. I messed up and my life hasn't been. Shake that stuff off. I'm telling you right now, shake that stuff off and approach the Lord as an innocent child expecting God to speak. Your children can mess up bad. And said, Mama, my stomach hurts. I'm the one that just spanked you. I know it hurts. Mama, my tooth is bothering me. They shake it off and they approach the mom and dad as if the mom and dad is more mature. Am I right or wrong? 
So I'm not telling you to let Satan talk to you and condemn you of your wrongdoings and your sins because he'll do that to keep you from expecting to hear from God. Now, how many of you are mature enough if your child comes in and says, Mom, I fell and cut my arm? Tell me about it. I'm the one who put the glass down. <laughs> Told you to stay outside or something. Now, some people may do that, but that's not a good parent. Are y'all listening to me? So if your mom brings up, you're hungry in the morning, mom, I'm hungry. I told you to eat Tuesday. <laughs> Mama, it's Friday. That's what you, I bet you'll eat the next time I fix them. <laughs> now, at first I didn't see anything wrong with that because I grew up in the projects and that was like punishment. You're going to eat that cereal until it's all gone. That cereal got so soggy, it looked like oatmeal. That's why I learned to eat fast. Ready, set, go. That was my blessing. And I would eat it. To this day, I can't stand soggy cereal. Because I wanted to play the weight game. So what am I saying to you? You can't allow Satan to make you feel guilty of something you've done. He'll tell you God is mad at you, and you'll stop expecting to hear from God. Please say this with me. Lord, I expect to hear from you. Say it again. One more time. I can't tell you how many times, and even after church this week, a young person has come up on this stage and said, Pastor, can you pray for me? What do we want to pray about, man? What do we want to pray about, little sister? I want to pray that me and my dad get along better. Okay, let's go. And then I'll say, expect God to speak to you now. And sometimes God will take moments just like right now. When everybody's in a hurry and all of us are tired, we got so much to do. We got sporting events tomorrow that are going to be canceled because we're going to pray for some rain. <laughs> but you know what I mean. And we're very busy people. But at some point, if we don't get equipped for the future, it'll be here and we'll be unprepared. And we'll start blaming it on white people having better chances, other people doing better businesses. And we didn't have the opportunity to learn how to talk to the chef. And the chef wants to hear your praises. You're approaching a giving God now. And I want to tell you this on his behalf. He wants to speak to you. God wants to speak to you. This whole message tonight has been a message for God to say to me to tell you, he wants to speak to you. You see, you will not go up to McDonald's and go, may I have a, uh, they say, may I have an order? You say, I want a cheeseburger and uh, a drink. The next voice you hear, the next voice you hear will be a confirmation. You believe that. Because if they don't, you go, excuse me, did y'all hear me? And they don't say anything, you will get on that horn. Bum, bum. And depending on what neighborhood you're in, uh, don't be blowing that horn. We hear you. Don't be blowing that horn. Ain't nobody deaf in here. <laughs> they went from that nice speech to that. Now, that depends on what neighborhood you're in. I don't know. Other neighborhood, we'll be right with you. Then they close the speaker off. Don't be blowing that horn. You get it? I'm going to say this again. You don't have to write it down, but I, kinda, I, want you, I really want you to. W when you pray and ask God for a specific, or, or ask God a specific question, when you ask him specifically, you've got to believe that in the next few moments, you have to believe whatever you hear, within the next few moments will be the voice of the Spirit. And so the key is that it won't be sensational and it might be very faint. I mean, just it's in your spirit. But he's going to show you exactly what you're praying about. And you got to believe it just like that. And, and, and that's why if the phone rings then, if so-and-so comes in the room then, you just kind of have to maybe ignore it. But somebody made us think that God doesn't want to talk to us. Or it takes God five or ten years to say something. You know, this is a dialogue. 
He wants to talk to you. And a lot of people love their relationship with God, but they don't want to hear. I don't want a conversation with God all the time now. I mean, just God, you stay over there this evening. I can pick you up later on tonight now. But you got to guard your minds against wondering. So we're going to end this a little different tonight. We're going to end, have a prayer. And we're, we're going to start giving because you're going to have to set yourself up. Remember, I, I thought that I didn't have satellite because I hadn't paid on it. I paid up front. All right. We're going to bless our services tonight because it's been a blessing to me to talk to you. Amen. Adults, it's all right for you to be uncool and praise God still. See, kids pick up our praise habits, and they see us. They, they see us when we thank God for something. So if you thank God for this message tonight, I want you to let those in the house know. Now, if you don't, don't fake it. Don't fake it. Just chill out and, and, and stay mealworm. But if you want God to move on behalf of you, your family, your children, your prayers, and you don't mind warming up, Show God you thank him for this word tonight. We have to encourage you. Young people, I got to walk y'all through it. There you go. There you go. Okay. And that's how we learn to praise him. Now, you just do that on your own sometimes. Don't get into the competition where you want people to see. I like that part. Say that right there again. Tell God that. Father, in Jesus' name. A lot was said tonight. A lot was said. And a lot was done. And so we thank you for teaching us about the simplicity of hearing from you. And thank you, Lord, for choosing to speak to us. Thank you for placing your spirit in us and making us worthy vessels. Now, Lord, we understand. We, we understand it. We, we don't like it, but we understand that the word of God says that immediately after the word is sown, the enemy comes in. So Lord, prepare our hearts and our minds to stand boldly for the attacks against Christians everywhere. Help us to be strong enough to be believers when others don't believe that we believe. Help our strength help us to grow more in you help us to keep our minds tuned in to the satellite version of a word that makes us understand that you can talk to us you talk to a lot of people you have access to our thoughts you have access to our funds you have access to our hearts now Lord we're going to lift an offering and there are those who are listening who may have started out listening and Lord, as much as we talked tonight, maybe the battery ran out on the phone or something. But, but Lord, we, we committed to staying in line and receiving it. And then there are those young people, not just in this room, but everywhere, who said, wow, I, I just didn't know, God, you wanted to talk to me like that. And now, Lord, the, the, the rest of it, and as we teach more and more about it, is going to be between you and each individual as you warm up the whole place and we want to stir up our spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching and for being bold and unashamed. Looking for even more content from Ibach and Pastor Ricky G. Rush? Make sure you're following Ibach and Pastor Rush on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For even more info right at your fingertips, the new mobile app is available for iOS and Android in the iTunes and Google Play stores. And don't forget that an important part of accomplishing God's mission are the tithes and offerings we receive from faithful viewers just like you. Won't you make a difference and become a fisher of men, supporting the ministry work of IBOC and helping us change thousands of lives all over the world? Visit us online at ibachchurch.org or on our mobile app to make your donation. You can also give through Givelify in just a few short steps. 
Thanks for your support. That's it for now, but be sure to tune in next week for another powerful message from the master illustrator, Pastor Ricky G. Rush.